Elder Leslie, I, I am in agreement with you 100%. Um, and the Lord has indeed blessed me with a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful woman who is devoted in taking care of me. I, I am so glad. I must, um, I must take the opportunity in saying um, a good afternoon to everyone. The Spirit of God is with us. I want you to know that wherever you are at this time, it um, doesn't matter if you're still in your bed. Uh, the fact that you are in tune with, um, with the worship, I want you to know that God is with you. Wherever two or three are gathered in the name of God, we are told that he is in the midst. And I believe that he is with us today. And so I want to praise God for his presence and thank him. Thank him for the blessings that he gives to us every day. Today is no exception. You know, I... At some point in time, I asked the question, where has the summer gone? Because in just a little while, it will be September. And when September comes, it seems as though it ushers in the colder uh, period of time. And the heavy coats are out and the boots are out. Um, but I want you to know that when the Sabbath comes, it is always warm. It is always warm because God is in the midst. This morning, I want to share with you a word um, that I have entitled, uh, The Plan of Salvation Made Simple. Um, in other words, the plan of salvation made plain. And uh, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13 um, highlights um, something that is uh, wonderful. It says, for God um, has been so wonderful to us. He's been so, so merciful to us. Um, the word says, fear God. And keep his commandments, for this is man's duty. This is man's all. And I pray God today that we will be drawn close to him as we fellowship. Father God, I bow in uh, your presence. Of recognizing, Lord, that... I am merely an instrument through whom you are addressing your people this morning. So, Father God, may I not be seen, but may Jesus Christ be seen and heard um, this, um, this Sabbath afternoon. Fill us now with your Holy Spirit, I pray. And so, loving Father... Hide me now uh, behind the cross, I pray, in the mighty and precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, in the Bible, um, uh, the whole duty of man is defined. And Solomon says, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Um, uh, the will of God is uh, revealed in, uh, in his written word. And this is essential knowledge. I say that again. Uh, the, the will of God is revealed in his written word. And this is essential knowledge. Human wisdom, familiarity. Uh, with the languages of different nations is a help in the missionary work. 
And uh, there are several things that we can do to make the scripture appear clear. You know, I, an understanding of the customs of people. The customs of the people. And the, the location and time of events. Um, these are practical knowledge and important, valuable aids in uh, making uh, the figures of the Bible clear. They bring out uh, the, the force of Jesus' lesson to us. But it is not positively necessary to know these things. It is not positively necessary to know them. Uh, the way fear in man may find uh, the pathway cast up uh, for the ransomed to walk in. And uh, there will be no excuse found for anyone who perishes through misapprehension of the scriptures. You see, friends, the scriptures are plain um, for our understanding. If it was not so, God would not have given it to us. In fact, in fact, the Bible says the scripture is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. And the simple minds can appreciate the gravity of God's words. You know, there are individuals who have not been able to read prior to picking up the word of God. They have not been able to read. But having picked up the word of God... And, uh, and spent time at the feet of Jesus. They emerged reading the scriptures. If that isn't miraculous, then I don't know what else is. In, uh, in the Bible, every vital principle is declared. Every duty made plain. Every obligation made evident. The whole duty of man is summed up by the Savior. He says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You know, that's from all, from all that I have seen, that one appears to be quite difficult. <laughs> quite difficult. Because uh, it, is, uh, it is so plain for everyone to see that people, people are against other people for various reasons. But the Bible says we must love our neighbor regardless. The Lord did not qualify this love. He says love your neighbor. Even if you have a cantankerous neighbor, the Bible says love your neighbor. Even if you have a malicious neighbor, the Bible says, love your neighbor. After all, you are not a child of the devil. You are a child of the living God. And if you're a child of the living God, you must exemplify Jesus Christ in your life. The Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. In the word, the plan of salvation is plainly delineated. The gift of eternal life is promised on condition of saving faith in Christ. We have been shown 
that the drawing power of the Holy Spirit is an agent in the work of salvation. The rewards of the faithful, the punishment of the guilty, are all laid out in clear lines. The Bible, my friends, the Bible contains the science of salvation for all those who will hear and do the works of Christ. We can read and spend time reading all sorts of material. But I want to say to you, my friends, do not neglect the reading of the Word of God. Read all you can. Read all the newspapers you want to read. Read all the books you want to read. But do not neglect the reading of the Word of God. Because in there we find the science of salvation. And if you and I are going to be saved, then we must be acquainted with what it is we need to do to be saved. The apostle says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You know, the, um, I think in the King James Version it said truly furnished. Um, but I'm using the word here thoroughly furnished, um, completely furnished, ready furnished unto all good works. The, the, the word of God, the, the scripture is profitable for correction, the Bible says, for correction, you know, um. Many individuals do not like to be corrected. They do not like to be corrected. Um, they consider themselves to be a fountain of all rectitude and correctness. They consider themselves to know all. And so they are not willing to be corrected. But the Bible says the word of God is profitable for correction. It is profitable for instruction into righteousness. It is profitable, my friends. And so God expects us to spend time um, acquainted ourselves with his word. Spend time with the word. The Bible is its own um, expositor. One passage will prove to be a key that will unlock other passages. And in this way, light will be shed upon the hidden meaning of the word. By comparing the contents of, a different Bible ver of different Bible verses on the same subject, viewing their bearing on every side, the true meaning of the scriptures will be made evident. We have read in scripture here a little, there a little. Um, God wants us to dig deep. He wants us to search. And as we search through the Holy Spirit, we will find the Lord God, the creator of the worlds, at infinite cost, we are told, has given the gospel to the world. And this, um, this quote I've taken from the Fundamentals of Christian Education, page 186 through 188. Uh, the Lord, the creator of the worlds, at infinite cost, has given the gospel of um, the gospel to the world. 
And friends, the gospel of Jesus Christ is fundamentally about Christ dying for a lost world. We are lost without hope until Jesus finds us. We are lost, lost, dead in sin, lost in sin until Jesus finds us and liberates us from the shackles that holds us and binds us together. Many have spent their lives running away from Jesus, hoping that at a convenient time, perhaps after they have tasted what the world has to offer, and they have done all, burned themselves out, now they're tired of running, and they come running to Jesus. But the God that we serve, the God that we serve is such a loving God. The God that we serve is not a man, that a man like us. He is a loving God. And he will always accept us when we come to him. Won't turn his back on us. But what... A tremendous tragedy because Jesus gave up his life to save you and me and to give us eternal life. A life without pain. A life without heartaches. Uh, a pain-free life. A life where death as an enemy will itself die. God has given us all that it takes to enjoy a life free from struggles, free from injustices, free from calamities, free from pestilences, free from COVID-19, free, my friends, free. Jesus has given us all. He has given us life. And what a tragedy when people turn their backs on Jesus after all that he has done. He has suffered on our behalf. He has been marginalized. He has been brutalized. The Bible declares that they thrust um, a crown of thorns. On his head, and blood came oozing down his temples. And he did it for you and me. The word of God tells us that. It shows us that we are immensely privileged. And so we need to dig deep in the word of God and on earth the wonderful truths that are there. Are for us. The word says we must ensure that we do not um, love the world with all that we have and love everything in the world. We need to spend our time loving Jesus, loving God, and loving our fellow man. You know, John, John admonishes us to search the scriptures. For in them, he says, think you have eternal life. And Jesus says, and these are they which testify of me. In John 5 and verse 39. These are they which testify of me. You see, friends, the religious leaders um, of Jesus' day, they searched, they searched the Old Testament. Yet, they did not recognize the Messiah when he, uh, he came. You see, it is possible to read the Bible without benefit. And this is if we read with the wrong motives. 
And Jesus believes that the Old Testament is not obsolete, for it bears a witness of him. And God speaks to us in his words. Um, here we, we have a clearer lines, um, the revelation and of his character. The word gives us a clear understanding of the character of Jesus. Of his dealings with us and the great work of redemption. Here is open before us the history of patriarchs and prophets and other holy believers of old. They were subject um, to like passions as we are. James 5 and verse 17 says so. We see how they struggle. They struggled through discouragements, like our own, our own struggles. How they fell on the temptations as we have done. And yet, yet, friends, they took heart and conquered through the grace of God. And beholding, we are encouraged in our striving after righteousness. And oftentimes we ask ourselves the question, why is this thing in the Bible? <laughs> um, but they are there for our benefits. And we must ask, we must ask the Spirit of God to bring enlightenment um, to our hearts. As we read of the precious um, experiences that was granted to these men of old. Of the light and love and the blessing that was theirs to enjoy. And uh, the work they wrought through the grace given to them. The spirit that inspired them kindles a flame of holy emulation in our hearts. And the desire... To be like them in character. Like them to walk with God. Oh friends, in times like these, we need a savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds. And grips the solid rock. Jesus is in our world today, my friends, to ensure, to ensure that light comes to you, to ensure that you are liberated from the shackles that anchored you. God wants to ensure that you and I are emancipated. He has gone to prepare a place for us, a special place. Jesus said of the Old Testament scriptures, and how much more it is true of the new. They are they which testify of me, the Redeemer. Him in whom our hopes of eternal life are centered. Jesus wants us to be left with no doubt whatsoever that he came to give you life. He came to give you life and if you were the only individual that had sinned, Jesus would have come and would have given up his life just the same. Because he came to eradicate sin. And if you were the only sinner, Jesus would have come. What an immense privilege and we have. Uh, the whole Bible tells of Jesus. Uh, from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Uh, from the first record of creation, 
For without him, the Bible says, was not anything made that was made. Uh, to the closing promise, behold, I come quickly. We are, you know, we are reading of his works and listening to his voice day after day. Every time we pick up the word, every time we open up the word, Jesus is speaking to us. He's speaking to us. And if you want to become acquainted with the Savior, then we are admonished. Study the Holy Scriptures. Spend much time with the Word. Fill the whole heart with the Word of God. They are the living water. Quenching your burning thirst. They are the living bread from heaven. And Jesus declares, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, we shall have no life. You shall have no life. I shall have no life in us. And he explains himself by saying the words that I speak unto you. They are spirit, and they are life. They are spirit, and they are life. Our bodies are built up from what we eat and drink. And is, as in the natural economy, so in the spiritual economy. It is what we meditate upon that will give tone and strength to our spiritual nature. And let me say that again. Our bodies are built, it is built upon what we eat and drink. And in the natural, as in the natural economy, so is the spiritual economy. It is what we meditate upon that will give tone and strength to our spiritual nature. And that is crucial for our, our understanding. It's crucial. If we spend our time, you know, um, putting drunk food in our system day after day after day, then you will soon look like the drunk food. No doubt. No doubt. It is visible to be seen. <laughs> I'm not looking at anyone here today. <laughs> and equally, if you spend time putting in whole food, wholesome food in your system, then you will, you will epitomize Health and vitality. You'll be full of energy. You would look good. It follows also, it follows also, that if all that we put into our brain is junk, then all that comes out of our system is junk. God expects us to spend time putting into our system that which builds, that which energizes, that which tones our system, strengthens our moral system, our moral fiber, our spiritual nature. That is what God wants of you and me today. So spend time with the word of God. Spend time with the word of God. The theme of redemption is one that the angels desire to investigate. It will be the science and the song of the redeemed throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. It is not worthy. It is not worthy to be put on the back burner. It is worthy. It is worthy to be given careful thought and study. 
It was the intent of the heart of God that man should live forever. He created a perfect man and placed him in the Garden of Eden. And there he had a direct communion with the Creator. And when man sinned, in a, in a manner of speaking, he, you know, this old thing of sinning broke the heart of God. He had to revert to the plan of sending his son into this sin curse, this morally bankrupt place called earth to die, to give up his life, to save us. He gave up his precious life so that we can be saved. Christian friends, the primary purpose of Jesus' ministry was salvation. And those who reject that salvation judge or condemn themselves. So every call to faith brings judgment along with it. And one cannot be casual about the gospel. We cannot be casual about the gospel. Procrastination is not an option. Procrastination is not an option. There can be no element of doubt. We must be decisive. God calls. We must respond positively. We cannot afford to be affected by what I call a spiritual somnambulism. This is fatal. You know, in the real world, somnambulism is, a, is, a, is, a, is something that you would sought to get medication for. This is a sleep disorder that, that lends itself to one walking about in their sleep. We cannot sleep, walk our way into the kingdom. We cannot get to heaven by accident. We cannot get to heaven by stilts. Christian friends, you and I must want to be there. We must choose to be there. No accident, no sleepwalking. That's a debilitating condition. No one wants their sleep to be um, traumatized by every time you go to bed at night, you get up walking about, soon you're going to trip down the stairs. So you go looking for medication to cure the problem. Somnambulism. Spiritual somnambulism is detrimental. We need to spend time um, with the word of God. We need to turn to the master potter. We need uh, to be put back into the mold and reshaped. The master designer and creator need to do a job of recreation in bringing us back to where we should be. But, you know, we have to allow ourselves um, to, for that work to be done on us. Man's only hope of continued life, a life without the ravages of sin, is Jesus Christ. Man's only hope today is Jesus Christ. Today things might be going good for you, in that you may, you may have the perfect job, the, the most beautiful home, wonderful children. Indeed, you might have all the money you will ever need. But a life devoid of Jesus Christ is no life at all. All those things that one possess, they will pass. They are transitory. You know, the transitory nature of earthly life should galvanize us into searching out the only hope for the future. And that is Jesus Christ. The only hope for the future is Jesus Christ. And Christian friends, let me say 
Um, 2020 has never been a year. Um, there's never been a year like that. Um, at once, at almost the drop of a pin, the whole world collapsed on the COVID-19. <laughs> the whole world. Every country is affected. Everybody is affected. And you might not have had it, but you are affected, trust me. Because the economy has been affected. And everybody has been touched. Well, I want you to know, my friends, that in God's business and in God's kingdom, there is not going to be any coronavirus. There is not going to be any mask wearing. Social distancing will not exist. I want you to know, I want you to know that it is a beautiful place. God has gone to prepare a real place, a place, a place that will not have any of these um, debilitating, mind-numbing, physically depressing and torturous diseases. What a place that is going to be. Why should you not benefit from it? Jesus has gone to prepare a place for you in such a wonderful place. And we are called upon to ensure that God takes control of our life. And finally, friends, in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, uh, Peter um, addressing uh, the very august body of the Sanhedrin, declare that salvation can be found in no other. For there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ, the sweetest name on earth. Jesus Christ, the name that gives the devil a headache. Jesus Christ, shout it from the mountaintop. Jesus Christ, he will never, he will never be tired of hearing you shout his name. Because every time we shout his name, the devil has a problem. And it is your duty and mine to trample all over the devil. It is your duty and mine to crush the devil at every instant. Your duty and mine to ensure that the devil is put in his place. And the Spirit of God is at your side to help you to do just that. He will not allow you to fight any battles for yourself. He says, I... I will fight your battles for you. I will ensure, I will ensure that the devil is defeated. And so today, Christian friends, today, I want to humbly ask you, spend time with Jesus. Spend time with Jesus. Allow Jesus' character to reflect um, through our lives. Love our, our brothers and our sisters. Get off the treadmill of indifference. Get off the treadmill of um, impatience. Get off the treadmill of backbiting. Get off the treadmill of malice. Be on a level with Jesus Christ. Be in the exercise room with Jesus. If you're on the treadmill and you fall, he's right there to pick you up. God is on your side. He's on your side. Give him the rain. He will lead you to victory. May God bless you. Amen. Amen.